Okay, lovely people, we have a huge unboxing today. Sarah Jessica Parker, Unspoken. Salvador Dali Laguna Adam Levine La Nuit Tresson So we're going to start off with Adam Levine for women. This is the cheapest perfume that I have bought. This was £2.75. And I haven't read terrible things about it, so that's why I thought I should try it. The top notes are supposed to be Saffron Marigold, the base Saffron Marigold and Citruses. And then the middle notes the heart notes are rose petals indian jasmine and australian sandalwood i'm not sure what the difference is between normal sandalwood and australian sandalwood <laughs> but i'm sure it's probably subtle the base notes are vanilla and benzoin so i'm quite curious to try it as i said it's not because um i heard anything i'm just you know always on the lookout for a bargain and Okay, I'm not getting anything off of the bottle, so we're going to try it on here. So it's a really cute, a small, teeny tiny size. I'm not sure I quite like this. I think it's supposed to create a microphone so that you can pretend to be singing along with Adam Levine. 
but okay here we go oh okay atomizer is not that great there wasn't a lot of great control with it oh okay it's not too bad it's very um i want to say mild it's pretty I think that this is a very inoffensive perfume. Definitely something I could see myself wearing around the house during the day. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of sandalwood. Just a little bit of sandalwood. Not yet getting any rose petals or vanilla for that matter. Hmm. Very, very, very mild. I mean, it's not bad for £2.75. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to turn my nose up at it. It's not unpleasant. It's pleasant. It's, it's, it's just pleasant for now i mean obviously i'll have to try it on my skin and see how we get on with it but not too bad i will test it again in another 10 minutes just to see if any of the vanillas are coming through so compared to other celebrity fragrances that are gourmands this is not uh, the strongest gourmand celebrity fragrance that i have come across this is definitely more it's more subdued more withheld i would say okay not bad for £2.75. Uh, for now, I'm thinking that this is something that I would definitely wear around the house when I want to just smell nice, but I'm not in the mood for something that has got strong sillage or anything like that because this doesn't feel to me like it's got a, you know, very, a very strong in-your-face uh, burst of notes that come to you. I'm not getting the spices. I know it's supposed to be spices, but I'm not getting any of the spices um, as well. There we go. Uh, so the name. next one is this Reb Fleur uh, from Rihanna. I love this fragrance because I got the uh, teeny tiny little travel size and I loved it. Out of the three, it had the nude uh, Reb Flower Love Always and the Reb Flower and this. Oh, I love it. Love it because it's got a really a strong coconut vibe. And it was my first ever uh, floral shipper, floral shipper perfume that I actually mm. liked. I've tended towards more of the gourmands. I love the gourmands, but yeah, I was very surprised to find out that this is a shipper. It's not as sweet as the other ones. It's very warm and it's fun and, and fresh. Ugh, I love it. So let's uh, just spray it. On. okay not all atomizers are created equal this one is not necessarily the best but oh mm, every time i get that it's just i love this why am i not wearing this today i know it's because i'm wearing mongolian intense today and i love that as well that's sort of like my favorite but oh i love this i love this that's why i thought i need to get the big bottle to add to my perfume wardrobe not a big fan of rihanna but i think that she did really well with this one so it's got notes of a uh, plum um coconut there's a sweetness that comes through from some of the fruits and there's some vanilla in there as well and musk as well and on my skin it performs so beautifully it lasts all day on my skin the coconut comes through even more as the day goes by and by the end of the night i've got like this musky coconut vanilla vibe going which is a little bit tropical a little bit sassy a little bit sultry as well fantastic addition to my collection sarah jessica parker stash unspoken so this is the third flanker that I have got. I started off with Stash, the original one, the one that's got the black uh, stripe across. And I wasn't too impressed with it when I first sniffed it. It wasn't love at first sniff. But then I wore it on my skin for a day. And oh my goodness, what a journey that perfume takes you through. It is amazing. And I loved it so much. I read that it was discontinued, so I was just like, oh my goodness, I have to make sure that I've got a backup bottle. I had the 30 mil, and then I ordered another 100 mil um, as well. And I also decided to try the flankers because I was very impressed with that one. And I tried the Privé, and that's the one with the pinkish one. And I love it as well. It uh, smells like a uh, Chance au Tendre, but it's just so beautiful. And so I decided I was going to, might as well get, instead of just staying at two out of three, I'll get the three out of three and also get the unspoken. So this is what we have. So 
it's similar to uh, the stash prevent that the top notes are black pepper and quince and i like quince i haven't come across a lot of perfumes that use quince but it's such a lovely smelling fruit and in the summer i love to have quince just in a fruit bowl and it just fills the house with this beautiful amazing citrusy musky quincy um, ness so it's pretty cool the middle notes are honeysuckle peony and wisteria I'm not familiar with wisteria <laughs> Peonies, I don't think that they've got a very strong fragrance in real life, so who's to know? The base notes, you've got tonka, olibidum, uh, sandalwood, and musk. So this is going to be interesting to see what this baby smells like. Okay, not getting anything off of here, so... Mmm, so it's quite fruity and woody. That's the initial blast that I'm getting. I'm not sure that I'm getting the notes that I've read about in this. I can get a touch of the honeysuckle, just a touch of the honeysuckle. Okay, it's not love at first sniff, I admit it isn't, but you know what, that's what happened with Stash. When I first got it, it wasn't love at first uh, sniff, but when I put it on my skin, it was just amazing. So I'm going to reserve judgment for this. On the opening, it's not too bad, it's woody you know um but yeah it's a really lovely bottle again i initially didn't like the bottle design when i first came across stash but then the juice converted me and i love the design so i'm happy to have this uh, finally in my collection so this is the third flank uh, of the stash line okay up next is laguna by salvador dali i didn't even know that salvador dali did perfumes but i was browsing through a website and i actually saw this they were reasonably priced so i decided that i would try it because i actually really like the color my favorite earrings actually have a similar color and i like i think that this is one of the most unique bottles i've ever come across it's not pretty but i think even if you didn't know that salvador dali does perfumes and you saw this you would instantly think salvador dali so i think that the design perfectly captures um salvador dali's and yes yeah, so this is an awesome looking bottle i would keep this just for the bottle but when i went to read the profile for this i was just amazed because it's got so much stuff in it so it's got top notes include pineapple moroccan lemon grapefruit peach galbanum leaf plum mandarin orange raspberry i don't know what to expect there <laughs> already middle notes you've got italian iris brazilian rosewood jasmine lily of the valley and egyptian rose so again there's a huge mix of uh, floral scent profiles here and then for the base notes i don't think i've ever come across a perfume that has got this many base notes before but it's got coconut vanilla madagascan sandalwood tonka bean patchouli amber musk and cedar so it's got eight base notes um of which normally i like perfumes that have the sandalwood patchouli musk and tonka bean as a base but yeah let's let's try this um so i'm guessing from the color i'm expecting it to be i don't know aquatic i guess possibly right let's try this the bottle is amazing to look at as a piece of art but it's not very easy to um hold right here we go some of it ended up on my finger okay oh wow this is unlike anything i have smelt before quite fresh i am getting the citrus burst straight away a little bit air freshen-y maybe but those are just the top notes so we give them time to sort of settle down i gotta say the first sniff it's a little bit too air freshen-y for my liking, but I know not to judge a perfume based on the top notes. So, hmm, I'm just going to reserve judgment on this until I actually try it on my skin, because I've noticed that my skin kind of does different things with perfume. So I will try that then. But yeah, it's the citrus right now. What feels very strong is the citrusiness, the citrus notes. But yeah, um. You know, I'll reserve judgment on it, but just the bottle alone is absolutely amazing. But it kind of makes sense that if if it's a Dali branded thing, I mean, I have no idea if he, the man himself was involved in actually coming up with this fragrance, or this is sort of like the estate um, monetizing on his legacy. But 
I think it does fit into the Dali aesthetic of being provocative and different and unusual because this doesn't smell like any of the other perfumes that I have uh, smelt before, certainly of the same price range, because that's kind of like the price range that I play in, you know, bargains and stuff like that. But it is interesting enough for me to want to try it um, some more. But yeah, so that's Salvador Dali. So this is a fragrance that I have been lusting after for a really, really long time. It was one of the first fragrances that I tried when I went to a perfume department and I absolutely loved it, but I wasn't sure if it was too sweet or too strong. And I ended up buying the Flanker first, the Midnight Rose, but it is a Lancome Trésor La Nuit or La Nuit Trésor. I don't know, Lancome confuses me because it's got so many flankers. It does get a little bit confusing. Um, but yeah, I decided to finally bite the bullet and trick myself and actually get myself this. So I got this because this is always mentioned by a lot of people as being a wonderful gourmand fragrance and that it is also fantastic for the autumn winter. And lately I've been trying to collect some autumn winter cold weather fragrances so that I can try them out and build my begin to build my uh, winter perfume wardrobe. So we have this. Now in terms of the top notes it's supposed to have pear, uh, tangerine and bergamot. So I'm expecting a fruity opening. The middle notes we've got orchid and strawberry and we have black rose and passion fruit. So this is my first passion fruit perfume and I like passion fruit although we grew up calling it granadilla, which I think sounds a lot better, granadilla. <laughs> and then the base notes, okay, we've got a lot of stuff going on with the base notes. got praline, got caramel, we got lychee, patchouli, vanilla, incense, coffee, licorice, coumarin, papyrus. It's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. But without further ado, let us finally... Oh, I love this. I have to say one thing that I don't like about these Lancome fragrances is this little thing here. I, I feel like it just gets in the way, but here we go. Let's see. Oh, lovely atomizer. Oh. Mm. Love it. It's still got it. It has still got it. So I'm getting the raspberry in the opening there. I know it's supposed to be a middle note, but the raspberry is strong in here. And it's, uh, to me, because I have the uh, Midnight, the Midnight Trezor, which I wear a lot, I'm getting the same DNA there. So I've got the raspberry, but um, this one is not as musky as the, the Midnight. So the fruitiness, the strawberry is beginning to come through and you've got that hint of musk and vanilla. So this is full on gourmand. I, my gosh, this is so intoxicating. I just want to smell it. I just want to keep on smelling it. Now, I know that technically speaking, this is supposed to be a nighttime fragrance, which is one of the reasons why I was hesitant to buy it. But I feel like I could wear this during the day. I feel like when I put this on, it's because I'm feeling... I'm feeling like I really want to dress up in my nice, uh, really lovely, elegantly cut dress, you know, and I've got my big sunglasses on. Mm, yeah, I think that, love it, intoxicating. And it's also got, um, and I think it's because of the combination of the vanilla and the praline and the caramel, you get this lovely coffee-ness kind of creeping through. It's lovely. I love it. I'm so glad I finally, I finally took the plunge and actually bought it and added it to my perfume wardrobe. So that's what we have, guys. This is my uh, perfume haul. Sorry to my bank account, but I love it. I love them. I love them all uh, so much. I will report back on uh, how I get on with these. If uh, you like perfumes and you also like watching perfume stuff, then please do hit that subscribe button. Please also like the video. It helps the channel. And until I see you next time, guys.
enjoy the fragrances. Bye.